let us be still, leaving to one side our anxiety, our rush, our tension, letting go of our cravings for wealth and power and come to the place of at oneness with everything that is. From this place, let us celebrate the Christmas story and go on pilgrimage to meet the mystery that is present in all flesh and in all blood. Now let us listen to the story that is more than a story, a story that is you and me and all the people who have ever been. Let us join in prayer. God of every blessing, in this time of offering, may we begin to see the world in the light of the understanding you give us. As you chose the lowly, the outcasts, and the poor to receive the greatest news the world had ever known, so may we give our resources and of our very selves in support of the ministry to which you call each of us. May we especially remember our brothers and sisters less fortunate than ourselves in this season of giving. May the mission and ministry of this your church glorify you. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, as we gather this day, all our attention is focused on a baby lying in a makeshift bed in a it-will-have-to-do stable. It is not lost on us that you sent your Son, our Savior, into the world among the poorest of the poor and told us this will be a sign unto you. As we present these gifts to you, we pray that they may reach those in the greatest need, that they might lift those in the deepest of despair, and that they might bring peace to those who are in conflict. We pray this in the name of this holy child, Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Merry Christmas, folks. Got a quick little poem to share with you this morning. Twas the evening of Christmas when all through the fog not a creature was stirring, not even the dog. All the presents were opened, decorations askew, and the kids were all whining. We've got nothing to do. Mama sleep in her chair, all drained dry of, of cheer, with dreams of a cleaning service that soon would appear. Dad on his couch, looking haggard and tired, saying, yeah, right, to himself, some assembly required. I, I think you all get the thrust of this, folks. It, it's Christmas Day, Christmas morning to be exact. Now, fast forward your brain about 12 hours into the future here. What's your house look like on Christmas evening? Crumpled wrapping paper in the corners, a couple of busted ornaments, a toy or two that has already broken down, maybe some things that haven't quite made it up and running yet, maybe a few headaches, maybe a few heartaches. Just like Christmas Eve, there's a certain feel about the evening of Christmas. Y'all ever wondered what that Christmas evening must have been like for Mary and Joseph? If you uh, are a parent, you, you don't have to imagine too much. They, uh, you've already been there. On the day after Jesus was born, the uh, realities of parenting started to settle in, just as they would for any new parent. Diapers to change, 2 a.m. feedings, just like any other baby. Yet, it's already pretty clear this was not just any other baby. Luke's gospel gives us a glimpse of what it was like back then on that first Christmas day. It's from Luke chapter 2, and it starts with verse 19. Luke tells us that when the shepherds left, Mary treasured all these words, what those shepherds had shared with her, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen as had been told them. This is according to the scripture writer, Luke. This uh, word treasured, Mary treasured all these words, has behind it this notion of an idea of counting things up, almost like making a list so that you will not forget anything. It's what, it's what you do at the end of a very busy day, and you want to make sure you don't forget anything that has happened. That's the word treasured. The word pondered, and how she pondered this in her heart, goes deeper than not just wanting to remember or not forget, to ponder is to take the events that you're remembering and to go beneath the surface of them to try to understand what it all means and, and why it happened. That's where Mary's at in this and where the shepherds are at. On the evening of Christmas, Mary pauses not just to remember, but to understand. Do you all struggle? I, I know I do. I struggle with how I can get so busy with Christmas that I run the risk of missing Christmas. Y'all you you know what I'm saying? That's why I so enjoy the Christmas Eve candlelight services. They, they set the tone. They, they bring you home. They cause you to pause, to treasure, and to ponder. And what better time of the year than at the end of December to ponder what God has been teaching you through not just the last four weeks of Advent, but over the last 12 months of the year. And to consider the ways and works of God in your life and in the world around you. On, on the day of Christmas, that's what Mary does. Let's go to the next verse of this passage. 
Not only does Mary treasure all these words and ponder them in her heart, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and, and seen as it had been told them. Now, on the, on the day before Christ was born, those shepherds were in the field tending their sheep. On the evening of the next day, you'll want to know where they were. They're back in those fields with those same sheep. Do note here, their circumstances had not changed. They're back in the same fields, back with the same sheep, back with the same folk, back with the same job. Their circumstances had not changed. What changed? They changed. They returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Y'all hear what's going on? Christmas didn't come, doesn't come to change our circumstances. Christmas comes to change us. Deeply and profoundly, it comes to change us. Those shepherds, they still had to deal with cranky sheep, still had to deal with sheep manure, still had to deal with sheep smells. The work was the same, but they were different. They'd encountered the holy. They had seen literally the face of God. And on the evening of Christmas, their lives would never be the same. Folks, the Christmas season eventually ends for all of us. Soon enough, we'll be taking down the tree, packing away the ornaments, using the gifts received, or standing in line to exchange them. The Christmas season always ends. But the celebration doesn't have to. Not if we do what the shepherds did. Go back where we came from. Back to your office back to your classroom, back to your factory, back to your, your, your neighborhood, back to your, uh, to, your, to your job, back to your family duties, back to whatever it is you go back to, and in all of it, glorifying and praising God for what we have seen. Today and all through this day, take the time to ponder and treasure and to glorify and praise God. May you and yours be blessed on this Christmas day and in this Christmas season and in the new year to come. Merry Christmas, my friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the
my brothers and sisters, let us now receive the benediction. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child, Almighty God, who has been revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.